But let's talk about one that is all the way out in the Big West. UC Irvine, the Anteaters, hosting UC San Diego. And Irvine is a large 13-point favorite, total 139.5. And, and Matty Cox has an official play on this game for a Thursday. What do you have, sir? Looking at the dog, but looking at the dog first half. Um, I think this Tritons team, as I call them sometimes, the pitchforks, but the uh, San Diego-based school is just really feisty. They've been really competitive lately. I think they're seven and three against the spread in their last ten. Um, Eric Williams is a fantastic coach. Just doesn't really have the D1 talent yet coming through that program. Kind of a, new, uh, a newly promoted uh, D3 or D2 to D1 jump. Um, but I think they're starting to play better, and they have some transfer talent that's gotten healthier. They have a big guy. And uh, and Shimanga, who actually came from UC Irvine, I think there's a little bit of revenge on his mind. He's a big interior enforcer. You need size and physicality to combat what Irvine does. I think this is just a flat spot for the favorite, um, one in which they're not going to really, I don't think, put um, San Diego away with any sort of conviction. You look at San Diego's first half, second half splits all year. They tend to crack badly in the second half. They've had some um, you know, notorious – end game heartbreakers for backers on full game. But first half, they've been really solid. First 20 minutes, uh, I think Eric Olean's coaching edge kind of shows up then, and the talent gap catches up in the second half. So isolating a first half play here, um, taking the Tritons plus seven, getting the touchdown at first half. Interesting in the live chat, you got a couple people disagreeing with you and saying take uh, Irvine in that first half. And again, yesterday on the show, if you folks weren't with us, you played a first half and you played the game uh, on the side with South Alabama here. Was it just too many points? It just scares you off um, uh, here in this instance. Uh, and, and you believe, obviously, that Irvine will be better in the second half. What what led you to play only the first half in this game? Uh, just the way UC San Diego has been trending, the fact that they have um, Emmanuel Shimanga back, who's got a huge interior rim protector for them. I think you need that against Irvine's size. Also, both teams are kind of in a tough schedule spot where I just think it's going to be tough for one team to really extend their dominance today. And the other wrinkle, too, is UC Irvine was without their best guard last game. Uh, DJ Davis did not play in that. I don't have the updated status on him. It's not a very well-reported uh, league or team. But even if he does play, I think there's value. And if he's out, there's definitely value because they're very reliant on his shot making and the way the offense has been ho-humming this year for the Eaters. So um, I think if you're looking at full game, I actually might lean Irvine. But first half, I think it's a great San Diego bet here. Kyle Hunter, I saw you nodding when he mentioned that name, DJ Davis. And we do need to clarify again, we keep doing this geographically. There are three teams in San Diego. There's obviously San Diego State that's the most well-known. There's the University of San Diego that's in the West Coast Conference. And then this is University of California, San Diego, the UC school system uh, that is in the Big West. And they've recently only been put into Division One. I, I think this season. You guys can correct me if that's wrong. So we just got to clarify on Stay Classy San Diego, on which one we're talking about here on the show. Kyle Hunter, thoughts on this one real quick before we move on. Yeah, I mean, the first thing I was going to ask Matt is if he knew anything about DJ Davis in this game, because DJ Davis has been key to this team. 14, 19, 16, 18, 25 points and 18 points in their last few games. And I watched some of that game against Cal Poly, really ugly basketball. <laughs> they almost lost that game against Cal Poly on Monday, did UC Irvine. Um, I think uh, UC San Diego plus the points is a good look here. I would probably lean them full game, uh, especially at the chance that DJ Davis would be out here. But um, first half, I do like that play. Irvine's not actually been very good at home. If you look at road and home court performance, they're 343rd yep. at home. So it's not like they have this great home court advantage uh, that they can take advantage of. So um, UC San Diego has been able to be Sneaky competitive for a good while in a lot of these games. I think this is a good look. All right. Again, I just uh, oh, scanned again and can't there, find TJ. any. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, they tra Irvine travels to Hawaii for Saturday as well. So it's very rare to see a team play four games in the same week and the latter of those being a trip to Hawaii from the mainland. So um, just a brutal travel or schedule part of the season for the Eaters. Yeah, we were talking earlier in the week, and Matty, I think you were on the show, that we have we figured out yet why they were playing all those Big West games on President's Day. It wasn't like they were makeup games. They were already on the schedule. There were like four or five of them. So yeah, a lot of these teams – Right, a lot of these teams yeah. are playing like a fourth game uh, this weekend in, in a week. Uh, and so keep an eye on Irvine for that. For the purposes of the official play, uh, Matty Cox is on UC San Diego, and I could not find anything here at this check at 8.30 Pacific time. 
11.30 a.m. Eastern time on Thursday. Don't have an update on DJ Davis, uh, the player, and whether or not what his injury status is. Nonetheless, Matty Cox says, give me the Tritons of UC San Diego in the first half, plus the seven and a half.